And you know, he doesn't just join us in our suffering, he carries us in our suffering. And he suffers with us, so we are never alone. Who among you here have watched the movie Fathers 2? Raise your hands. If you've watched the movie Fathers 2. No one? Okay. <laughs> There's this one line in this movie that says, We should not pray for an easy life, but the strength to endure a difficult one. Because the experience of suffering is the fullest expression of God's love. It is a chance for us to be closer to Christ. It's a, it, it is a chance for us to become the people that we were created to be. You know, brothers and sisters, suffering is a profound experience. Sometimes we need suffering. Yes, you heard it right. I said it. Sometimes we need shock, suffering, shocking, right? Of course, we do not seek out suffering for ourselves. We're not masochists here. But when suffering comes, we face it head on. And sometimes we need it. We need it to go. We need it because it allows us to make necessary changes, necessary decisions that will make us a better person that will allow us to become the people that God created us to be. I remember the words of Pope Francis when he said, human beings are made in such a way that we cannot live, develop, and find fulfillment except in the sincere gift of self to others. We cannot live, develop, and find fulfillment if we do not make ourselves a gift to others. Brothers and sisters, so many of us think that when we are suffering, when we are still broken, we do not help others because we want to focus on ourselves first. We want to heal first. Well, by all means, if you need time to heal, go ahead, take that time. But you know what? You have to understand this. It is when we are sent out to others that completes our healing. Amen. If you need time, that's okay. You know, suffering, brothers and sisters, should open our eyes and allow us to see that there are people around us who are suffering too. The best healers in the world are wounded healers. Amen? The most beautiful people in the world, you know who? Ask me who. The most beautiful people in the world are those who fall down but yet choose to get back up again, heal, and then go out and serve others. Those are the most beautiful people in the world. Can you look at the person beside you? Are they beautiful? <laughs> you know why they are beautiful? Ask me why. Because they understand the suffering that other people are going through. You know, brothers and sisters, allow me to share my story. If you notice, I have no left hand. I was born like this. And growing up, I was very insecure because of my situation. I hated myself. I did not like myself. And I was bullied a lot growing up. Bullied at school, bullied in our neighborhood. There is this one part of our neighborhood that I do not want to pass by. Because every time I pass by that area, I would get bullied. People there would call me names. And I hated myself growing up. I did not like myself. And I grew up proving myself to the world. I wanted people to accept me. So every single you know, group of friends, I would go into it. I just wanted people to accept me. And that's why with that mindset, with my insecurity, I got myself into the wrong crowd, the wrong, the wrong group, group of friends. And I got addicted to so many things. Like addicted to alcohol, addicted to smoking, and many more. You know, brothers and sisters, it was when God called me to become a missionary that I realized that even in my brokenness, God has been blessing me. Even in my unfaithfulness, God has been faithful. Because when I started to see the blessings that I have all throughout my life, 
In those times when I was so insecure, God was blessing me. God was there. God was present. He never left me. It was at the age of 12 years old. At the, at the age of 12, I learned how to play basketball. And I was drafted to play as a mini varsity in our school. It was at the age of 13 years old that I learned how to play the guitar. At the age of 16, I learned how to drive a motorcycle. At 18 years old, I learned how to drive a car. And now, I am a missionary. And as a missionary, I do all these things to serve others. God used my brokenness to inspire other people. You know, our lives should be the greatest proclamation of the greatness of the King. Amen? Amen. We are called to be other Christos, to be other Christ. This is what Jesus did when he was here on earth. While he was suffering, he was also saving. Amen? The one thing that completes our healing, brothers and sisters, remember this. The one thing that completes our healing is when we are sent out to others. If you're broken now, heal. And even though you're not completely healed yet, allow God to send you to others. Maybe there are people around you who are broken too. Who are also in their desert moments in their lives. They need the Lord. They need you. Amen. And that's wonderful. Simply because your heart breaks when you see the suffering. Therefore, you go to others. That's our way of being like Christ. John the Baptist, when he was still here on earth, he was the voice. He wasn't the Messiah. He's the voice. Jesus was the word. And today, it's still the same. We are the voice. Can you tell the person beside you, you are a voice. And we continue to proclaim, we continue to exalt. You know why? Because today, Jesus is still the word. Amen? So right now, brothers and sisters, we have leaders around you who are standing around you. I invite the leaders to gather around or to stand around our everyone here. These are our elders and leaders. And they will be giving you a mission cross and a mission rosary. Okay? Let's not, we're going to do this because we're not just going to talk about it. We're actually going to do something. We will receive a reminder tonight that we are sent out to others. And once you receive this cross or rosary, brothers and sisters, hold it in your hand, hold it close to your heart, okay? So our elders and leaders are here standing, ready to give you this mission cross and mission rosary. If you're a brother, approach a brother. If you're a sister, approach a sister. So go ahead, brothers and sisters. I invite you to do that right now. Well, actually, our leaders are already going around giving the rosaries and the cross. Once you receive it, hold it in your hand, brothers and sisters. Let this be our reminder. Go ahead. Go ahead, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 